All right, guys, I don't usually do too many follow-up videos and kind of response videos, but I did get a lot of comments, and I figured that since the enough has changed from my review on the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus, I would actually do a proper kind of follow-up video and explain, uh, you know, why I did the testing that I did and essentially why I think this uh, axis lock is failing. So first off and foremost, I tried to clarify in that review video that you know I'm not necessarily one to usually baton their folders, but there's a few reasons why I did in this video. First one is kind of the legacy of the Adamus. Having had a generation one Adamus, the original 275, it was a very tanky, very strong blade. And I thought that the 273 would live up to that same kind of heritage. It did not. In addition to that too, DBK or the guys at DBK or Dutch Bushcraft Knives also did their own testing on the 273 and found it to fail. So I thought naturally I would also do the same to mine to see if I could induce failure as well. And I was successful in that. And lastly too, while it's not everyone's practice or everyone's favorite, I do when I have when I have folding knives that I take out into the wilderness and use out in the bush as complementary knives to my primary bushcrafting knives, I like to know that they can take abuse and hard use should they need it, especially if it's a survival situation. A lot of people will say, you know, you would never need to do that to a folder, but to be perfectly clear, in a survival situation and in a pinch, you really never know what you will need to do. So it's nice to have a clear understanding of the abilities or inabilities of your tool at minimum and try to have a blade that at most will be able to take those reasonable tasks. Once again, I'm not encouraging you to like baton through a rock or a brick and I certainly didn't do that with this knife. Everything that I did as far as wilderness testing, I feel is completely reasonable and something that you could practically or may practically need to do with a folding knife. So that's kind of the uh, underlying reasons as to why I batoned it so much and tried to see if I could induce the lock failure. Now, another thing that kind of disappointed me about this blade and the reason why I wanted to test it failing so many times was because I have had a lot of Benchmates on this channel. And in fact, this is really the first knife that I bought that kind of started my knife collecting journey. It is an old school Benchmade 550 Griptilian. And as you can see in the video that I'm rolling in, both the 550 Griptilian and my older 556 Mini Grip both batoned through wood effortlessly, flawlessly, and while that was just a short kind of sampling uh, of what these knives can do, I have had both of these and other Axis Locked Benchmades throughout throughout the years and I have been able to be hard and test these blades you know in batoning and other hard use cases and they hold up perfectly fine they do not fail at all so that is essentially uh, something that when it comes to the axis lock is generally regarded that maybe the axis lock isn't the toughest lock things like the triad from cold steel is definitely tougher but the axis lock should be no slouch and once again i have used many axis lock knives over the courses of the years and still own old school ones that are very tough now in addition to this too i got a lot of recommendations to check out and purchase cold steel triad lock knives trust me guys i do own I do own the Formax and I will likely increase my collection on cold steel triad locked folding knives. They are definitely very tough and I've been impressed. Uh, I've been quite impressed with what I've already seen. So, <clears throat> so hopefully that addresses that kind of uh, comment or suggestion that came up a lot. I do appreciate it a lot as well. Um, I do appreciate it too a lot as well. So don't make any mistake. I definitely keep the suggestions coming but I do, I do know that the triad lock is very strong. So those are the primary reasons I tested this blade. Now, off camera, I did continue to test this knife, and this is why I always recommend people follow my Instagram because I did some Instagram, uh, you know, like little, sh little short stories uh, kind of showing the lock failure, blade play, and uh, more kind of testing on this blade. Now, <coughs> Now, uh, like I said, after the knife review or after my review was released, I continued to test this blade and kind of play around, see what might actually be causing the lock to fail. 
and I think I do have some ideas. I did also take the suggestion from one commenter to watch a modification video where someone said that they supposedly made the, the lock strength uh, stronger, and I think that that video may have been correct. I was, I feel like I was able to get a little bit more axis lock bearing material or the bearing uh, portion of the axis lock to engage further on the actual axis uh, or on the tang of the blade. So you guys can kind of see there. Uh, however, that did not in practice help the lock strength and the blade still has play in it. So it did not increase its ability to not, that did not increase its ability or reduce its failure rate. It still failed pretty much on every baton test. So let's talk about the couple reasons why I think that this newer axis lock is failing where previous generations of the axis lock, such as this Griptilian, do not fail. So the first one for me, I believe as I've seen, and like I said, as I showed on my Instagram channel uh, or on my Instagram page, I think that the bearing material or the bearing block for the axis lock is a softer metal. And that's primarily because I was able to see shavings of it coming off onto this little cleared portion of the tang where the two surfaces interface. So that's something I've never seen on any of my proper axis locks before. So I think that this axis bearing material is a softer material and that may, it certainly doesn't assist with strength. Next to that too, and I think the largest underlying cause to the failure of this blade, I originally surmised it to being, you know, that this is maybe a shock on the blade and that that shock causes disengagement. And while that may still be true, I think that there has to be, or I think the largest contributing reason is because of the axis locks or the omega springs being far, far weaker or far easier to um, disengage. Now, something like I said that I can easily attest and I can't necessarily show it on the video, but when I have my older axis locked griptilian here, uh, axis locked griptilian here versus the newer axis locked um, adamas, it's very easy to tell that the spring strength on the older axis lock is much stronger. So these omega springs feel and require far more force to disengage the lock than on the newer axis lock. And I've also noticed this on other knives such as my newer bug out and my larger uh, automatic, the 2750 full size auto Adamus. And so I've noticed that by and large, the axis springs are much easier to deploy or disengage, sorry. And uh, I don't know if that's because the Omega Springs are of a thinner material. I don't know if that's because they're longer. There's a, a number of reasons why that might be, but I do know that the Omega Springs are much easier to disengage and just ultimately move. And I think part of what's causing the lock to fail is as pressure and as weight is applied to the back or the spine of the blade, that that is causing a shift and there's less resistance with the axis lock as a whole because of the lighter springs and that's causing premature disengagement of the lock. So I believe that ultimately what's really the root or what's really the cause of this failure or disengagement is the fact that these springs are not as strong and so therefore when they're met with pressure they are more easily willing to disengage than on older generations. Even the mini grip here that I have, which is a smaller axis lock, which you would think hypothetically would have a easier spring to disengage or uh, disengage is actually still, it feels much harder to disengage than this. It does have less travel than this uh, larger axis lock in, in the mini Adamus, but it still does feel harder still definitely feels harder to disengage than on the newer axis locks. So as far as it goes, I think that that's the primary root or cause to the lockup failures on these Benchmades. And once again, on the newer axis lock Benchmades. And once again, when you have repeated failures, eventually that bearing surface that engages with the kind of spine or tang of this uh, blade wears away and kind of cuts at that axis lock. So that is the reason why there is now blade play in this knife 
because it has kind of worn away on the bearing surface of the axis lock. So definitely disappointing and I think it's kind of sad because I really do like the aesthetics, the materials like CPM crew wear, and the overall kind of size and carryability of the 273 Mini Adamus. It had so much potential and I think still is a very cool knife. It's just disappointing to see such a tanky, overbuilt, heavy knife that is weaker than a knife that is smaller, lighter, and overall just a, a smaller knife you know, this, this little guy is more tough than this big, chunky, heavy guy. Uh, and I think that's another reason why I wanted the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus to be a tank, to be able to take, you know, that extra kind of force. I mean, if this smaller knife that is smaller in all regards is tougher than this bigger knife, then it, it kind of defeats the purpose of carrying a tanky blade if it's not really tanky. So anyways, guys, that's kind of a follow up from what I've learned from experimenting and testing on the 273. I hope that Benchmade does fix this because the Mini Adamus is a very cool knife and it would be really great to see a fixed blade or to see a fixed uh, kind of knife or folding, you know, pivot mechanism that does not fail or locking mechanism that doesn't fail that can make this knife as tanky as it looks because it looks like a tanky because it looks like a tanky, robust, overbuilt blade. It just doesn't perform that way. So anyways, guys, that's kind of my follow-up on the 273 and what I've uh, learned from experiments and testing. And that is the background to why I tested it the way I did and why I think it should be able to be more robust than it actually is. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.